ago, I released movie film which brought great shame to Kazakhstan. But now I was instructed to return to Yankee land to carry out secret mission. I go to America! Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Film Optics Review brought to you by the Drive-In Podcast Network. I'm your host, Christian, and today we will be reviewing the latest Amazon video movie, Borat, the subsequent movie film. And as always, I'm joined oh, no, by you Michael gotta, you gotta say it. You gotta say the whole title. Borat, wait, what? I thought it was Borat's subsequent movie film. There's, there's that, a lot more under that. There's a lot more. What, what? What's the rest? Borat, subsequent movie film, delivery of pro- prodigious bribe to American regime for making benefit once glorious nation of Kazakhstan. Oh, there we go. Yes. As always. And that, that was my co-host, Devin. Devin, my, my co-host, my good friend. How are you doing today, man? It's, it's that, was, a, that was a mouthful. <laughs> you got you got the, the Kazakhstan accent down better than I do. <laughs> well, is this longer or shorter than Birds of Prey and the fanta- one fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn? It's longer, but yeah. somehow better. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, it's freaking hysterical. I love it. I love every second of it, man. Man, it, it feels it feels like we haven't done this in forever, but like we we skipped our uh, new show from this past week. I I was moving into a new place, so I had to focus all my energy on that. As much as I would love to have done a news story, I think we got some pretty interesting stuff uh, cooking up for this week. So, yeah, uh, it was so nice no, to have a, an A tier movie to, to focus on this time around. Like bonafide. <laughs> wow. No. <laughs> that is true. No way Wait. around it. Okay, like okay, what what was the last A tier movie besides Tenet? Because we only really did a not a non spoiler review. I don't know, maybe nineteen seventeen, possibly. Because like, like yeah, this 18? this would have been in theaters. Yeah, probably. But you know, COVID. So <laughs> wear masks, yeah, save I- life. <laughs> wear masks, save life. <laughs> I love Shasha Baron Cohen. But yes, uh, before we begin today's review, you can listen to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Red Circle, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, and of course, Amazon Music. And make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Film Optics. That is Optics with an X. Xbox, X-Force, whatever you want to call it. But yes, um, let me read the synopsis really quick. Uh, did you want to... Get into the gears a little bit, or just want to keep this, uh, you know, PG for the. Uh... Oh, <laughs> we can try. <laughs> well, did, did you want to do non spoiler? I mean, it is a real, I, we we usually figure this out beforehand. Obviously, if it's like a screener, but it's it's been out a few days now. I think we're good. All right, yeah, screw. It. We'll we'll just we'll just load our loads off about it and talk about it. So yeah, spoilers from here on out. Uh, just a uh, nice little warning for you guys. Just so. watch the movie. It's literally it's it's like an hour and thirty minutes, and it's probably one of the best hours and thirty minutes you'll have in your entire life. It is hilarious and fantastic. But uh, the synopsis for this uh, film reads: Following a uh, follow up to the film to the excuse me. Wow, let me start over. Follow up, <laughs> follow up film to the tw- uh, two thousand six comedy centering. <laughs> On the real life adventure of a fictional uh, Kazakhstan, I'm just going to say that, television generous named Abodat. It's so crazy it came out that long ago. I didn't even realize it was 2006. It's been forever. Did you watch it first before watching this one? Um, Not recently. It's been a while. I might need to go rewatch it. I think it's on Amazon (laughs) too. Oh man, but yeah, it's it's pretty much part part two. To he's you know, he's the hero America needs in in this time. He really is, man. And we we got some really you know Sasha Baron Cohen. Of course, he was a writer alongside uh, Anthony Hines, directed by Jason uh, Walden Walliner, and also of course starring Sasha Baron Cohen and Maria Bakalova, newcomer and. Yeah, and uh, Tom Hanks. Yeah, he uh, <laughs> he's third build, and a, a few others as well. Um, but of course, yeah, this 
Man, like I guess let's let's just talk about like our first impressions of it before we get into the uh, the weeds of it all. Of course, this is uh, streaming now on Amazon Video. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you you get Amazon Video for free. And the initial release date was four days ago, October twenty third of this year. But Devin, what 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 did you think about this uh, this this glorious film of a movie? I was so excited, and it lived up to the <laughs> hype. It's just. <laughs> classic Sasha Baron Cohen like he just knows how to how to get reactions out of people and how to politically satirize our terrible country he just knows exactly how to do it right yeah I I absolutely love satire films and I think the closest one in recent memory that I enjoyed was of course uh, Jojo Rabbit as well you know that talking about World War II and you know, the eyes of a blind fanaticism child who is literally willing to give like his left testicle to like uh, imagine if we got Sasha and Taika to work together. <laughs> oh my god. That'd be a you powerhouse. Imagine? That would be fantastic. And like this this entire film, like I first I started watching it a few days ago, but then like I don't know if my mom's ever seen it before. So I kind of just stopped and like I, I gotta watch this on my my own time, my my own terms. When no, no one else is around, I can just enjoy the Borat as it is. But <laughs> yes, it was, and I didn't really know how I felt about it at first, like going into it. But like, like you said, you know, it's been a while for me as well. Um, of watching the, uh, the, uh, the first movie. And I thought about watching the first one before I was like, nah, I'll just, I'll just, you know, up and watch this. But it was just like, there's twists and turns everywhere you go. And we kind of saw on Twitter, or at least I'm not sure if you did. Were you spoiled at all? Because I know the uh, the big twist there was uh, going around the interweb. Well, I saw the um, I saw articles about Rudy Giuliani, so I knew something happens with him. But that's I didn't know what. And I didn't know how terrible it was until I saw it. <laughs> Yeah, so I I didn't um oh I didn't realize that there were spoilers, but like luckily I never ran into any. But of course, since this is a you know spoiler review of um the second Borat film, we'll just call it Borat Two for short. Um, I <laughs> it of course it would be Borat the one who's spreading COVID all over the world. <laughs> Borat is the start of COVID. It's not, it's not a China virus. It's, it's Borat. Ch- China, China. Yeah. I, I actually, I, I actually like missed the, the Tom Hanks scene originally until I, I oh, saw him. No. I saw him in the cast and I was like, wait, I must've looked away for that second. And then I rewound it and I saw it. it was, yeah. Well, you it, went to Australia. <laughs> Cause that's actually that is where Tom Hanks uh, was. Yeah, it's um, where he got COVID. Yeah, it's where he got COVID. I was I was gonna look for the you know the more doctor uh, diagnosed. I guess you could say. Yeah, he was. I was like, oh my god, it's totally <laughs> is this this movie so like? I wonder how long it took them to shoot this movie because you know it's very very you know Borat-y. and of course you know Borat's coming to America you know to essentially. It was it was it was supposed to be the monkey, I forgot the monkey's name, already. But he was supposed to give uh, the monkey as a gift to Pence, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and then his plan changes <laughs> quite a few times. Yeah, and of course, you know he he returns home before coming to America. Uh, they should actually make a crossover, by the way, between coming to America and Borat. That would be hysterical. So apparently um, <laughs> filming started late 2019 to summer 2020. So oh, not, oh, not wow. too yeah. long. It's, yeah, not, not too long at all. I mean, especially for an hour and a half movie, but <laughs> of course, you know, Borat, he, he goes home to visit. It. He's a wife, my wife. <laughs> um, goes home I, to visit I, loved, I loved his kids' <laughs> names. Jeff Epstein and Huey Lewis. <laughs> Huey Lewis. <laughs> that was probably the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. I was like, oh my god. There's so many just small little gags throughout the movie. What was his um his daughter's name? Of course, you know, she goes on the adventure with Tuta. She comes she goes on the adventure with Borat through out, you know, since <laughs> he he finally, you know, reunites with his family, meets uh 
talks to his daughter and she wants to go with him. She says no. And then <laughs> it turns out that his daughter ate the monkey because yeah. <laughs> he was he was waiting on the monkey to be, you know, sent over for pence. And <laughs> she's like, oh, the monkey ate itself. He's like, what? <laughs> his daughter had quite the glow up, too. She really did. I, I mean, I, I kind of figured that was going to happen. I'm like, this girl is probably... Nine times out of ten, you know, extremely attractive in normal circumstances, of course, you know, movie magic with the whole making her with the uh, unibrow like Helga Pataki. <laughs> Where did they come up with that name? I swear. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, she definitely has the big glow up. She becomes this type of reporter. You know, she you know, her, her father's kind of been feeding her all these lies. And of course, like in Kazakhstan, that, that book she had, and then she showed the, <laughs> the the older lady, and she was like, "No, that's that's not how it works." She's that lady was like, so she, wholesome. She was just like <laughs> helping her the whole time. She's the, the hero. black lady. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I've been talking. Like, go, go ahead. T- t- tell me about your your favorite parts. Your uh, oh, there's your, there's so what many. What, what what you found engaging? I guess I love the <laughs> I love the the Trump Melania Cinderella movie they had going on in the background. <laughs> oh, yeah. Trump was just so Maybe. large and wide. <laughs> he looks so in funny. his tiny hands. Yeah. Oh my god! It, it's also just funny to think that she looks at Melania like like Cinderella because she's from. Yeah, a foreign country and just got swooped away. <laughs> and like their her, you know, in, in the movie, her, her entire, you know, their entire culture is that women are just essentially property. Like they can't drive, they can't read. Um, you know, obviously they, they can, you know, speak, but it's just it's it's it was such a culture shock to her to find out that like all these women, you know, are just so independent and you know have their own lives, have their own say in the world and whatnot and she was so you know her father's been feeding her all these like you know nonsensical lies and whatnot it was just it was it was probably one of the biggest culture shocks ever and then of course and then then she accidentally (laughs) eats the the little baby from the cupcake oh my god i put i put a baby inside my daughter (laughs) (laughs) i was like no as soon as you said that i'm like i know exactly where this is going but this is so funny and uh wow oh wow it was just overall like i mean obviously the inspiration of the movie is you know this is coming out right like a week before election day which is (laughs) perfect honestly really really perfect (laughs) and it's just it's definitely the most up-to-date movie that's going on in time in our time right now um obviously you know we couldn't really have seen this coming but it's just (laughs) I love the Borat's uh is super is uh like super left like Republican friends where they just hate everything about like every single Democrat and they're like, Yeah, you know, like uh the 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 COVID virus it was uh manufactured in China and all this other stuff. And I'm like, it's just it's so crazy, you know, I guess not to get political, but being political at the same time or whatever like it's just it it shows how ill-informed people really are about what's going on and they just like don't care and they think anything that they hear from just some random person some random source without facts checking is right and it's just i don't know the cast was very very perfect though like of course <laughs> i was actually going to bring up that part with when he was living with those two dudes that's like that felt like t- too unrealistic. Like for them to to let this weird foreign guy into their house and live with them, and then like help him out on his journey, didn't. I don't know. It just felt weird. Like it did feel weird because they obviously aren't the, the most open people. So it's just the, <laughs> I don't know. That part was kind of hard to believe. I don't know if it was actually real. So I'm trying to figure out if. Like was was all of this like skits like planned? Like obviously, you know, when he first comes back to America, and people are like, "Oh my God, it's Borat, it's Borat!" And he's like, "No, no, no, it's not me." Um, <laughs> I wonder how much of that was like actually planned. I, I loved his other disguises; they were so random. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! I think the funniest one is his country bumpkin one. That was hysterical. Yeah. 
But like even when he dressed he dressed up as uh Donald Trump and oh my <laughs> he God. tries to crash the Republican um uh, Michael Pennis. <laughs> Apparently he oh had to um he had to stay in a uh porta potty for five hours at the convention in order to infiltrate it. Really? Oh my god, that's so he like, said, yeah, he the, wore makeup in the costume underneath a clan robe before interrupting pants. <laughs> that was what he said. He's like, We're going to the, the Republican Dem- uh, convention. I need the perfect disguise. Yeah. <laughs> Walks in with the KKK. <laughs> uh yeah, apparently Trump did not like it. And Sasha Baron Cohen's like Hey man, like I don't, I don't, I don't like think you're either, very but, funny either. But you're helping me out. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that was, I think that was so funny. I can't believe he had to sit in a porta potty for so long. just For to five crash hours. The entire, the entire it was like, so good though. The fact that he actually crashed was like so hysterical. Like I find that like it wasn't staged. It's just it was what it was, and it's just it's this pure reactionary it's i mean you know it kind of reminds you of uh what is it uh impractical jokers in a way but like <laughs> just a whole another level <laughs> that's that's worth it though <laughs> that is like it's just it's like he's real but he's not at the same time because obviously you know a lot of the stuff they get they only get like really one take <laughs> They can't do it again. So, oh man, that th- this movie was fantastic. I I, I loved like everything about it. Um, now, now of course we got to talk about the Rudy Giuliani scene. Oh my god! <laughs> Go ahead and take that one away. I'm sorry. I'm, he's I'm just too giddy over here. <laughs> he's so slimy and disgusting and terrible. And then he tried to like backtrack and say he was just fixing his belt or something afterwards, like. That was Anyone who watches thing. that movie knows what you were doing there. You got caught yeah. red-handed. Literally red-handed. Like, I just can't even. And then, and then Boyer comes in. It's like, she's too old for you. <laughs> <laughs> like, he was, he was, he was definitely uh, fixing himself there, uh, ch- trying to get a little uh, too comfortable. He, he wanted to do something with her in a, in a hotel room. Someone he just yeah. met. Just shows what, what he's probably done already. Lots of times. <laughs> the fact that they were going through like all these like political um I wouldn't say influencers, but like just political um <laughs> political yeah, they were going down the line uh, and then they, they chose Giuliani. Yeah. Because he's the, he's got. one of the only ones that wasn't in jail. <laughs> right. <laughs> Literally every <laughs> she's like, What about this one? This one, this one. He's like, Jail, jail. You go to jail. <laughs> Uh, I just, uh, and of course, like you know, the the audience with with this is obviously America, and it, it, like you said, it, there there is no perfect timing as of right now, than to push out this type of movie to show like, like honestly, what like what what America is like really all about, like in a way, and it's it just shows the uh, so many exploits, which is which is like perfect. <laughs> And I just, uh, I, I, I could probably say with confidence, this is like my favorite movie of the year so far. Like just all, all over. Just it's, we needed a good comedy. It's been a while for like a we like really a really, a really good comedy. <laughs> I love it how he used. Uh, he went back to like that UPS store, or whatever it was, to like um, send the fax. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> fax like, back and forth. He was like, "What do you want <laughs> the me first to say? one? The Stop. first one back is a dick pic." <laughs> Sup, sup. sup. <laughs> he was like, he said, sup, chill it. <laughs> the suspense was definitely there, and I just, <laughs> oh man, oh man. All right, so I guess besides Borat, like, who was one of your favorite characters? For me, it, were, it would probably would just, <laughs> it would probably be his daughter. To be she honest. did a great job for she a did. new actor. Newish. The fact, the fact that like when she was reading that storybook about the teeth and the vagina. Oh my god! And she finally figures out that it just wasn't, you know, like a thing. 
and she like she's so enlightened and she it's like she just it's like she just won the lottery or something <laughs> she was like ladies please <laughs> take both index figures <laughs> like oh my god oh man but yeah man this this movie i i would definitely i can confidently say i would watch this like at least five times more this year like i will watch this on election day <laughs> It makes me want to rewatch the first one. It really does. And, and, like, it's been so long since I've seen. I think two thousand. Oh, that was like when I started high school. So yeah, it's it's been a while. Like it has been a good good minute. But uh, was there anything else you wanted to uh, touch on uh, that you know we didn't really get to already? I know we've kind of been geeking out over here, but <laughs> I think we touched like the major scenes. Yeah. Of course, she tries to get him, get her to get a uh, plastic surgery. <laughs> that he's was like crazy. Seventy dollars <laughs> short. So then he goes, <laughs> yeah, goes and uh, becomes a barber and just. <laughs> I don't even know what that was. The fact that he had all that money and he was still seventy two dollars short, and it's just like you know she's he's trying to you know like butter up for like Pence and, and whatnot and. Then you know that's that's when everything happens when his daughter gets mad, you know, like rightfully so, to like like feeding her all these lies and you know not to her seeing that she's like missed out on like so much of her <laughs> life. Go pick out a cage together for her. <laughs> she gets so excited. She was like, "This one." He's like, "How many how many humans can you fit in this cage?" And the guy's like, "One." The guy doesn't even <laughs> question it at all. <laughs> The black lady was probably my favorite. Yeah, she was. She was just like so caring. Oh wait, the mating dance. Oh my god, I forgot. That was that was a lot. That was a lie. I was like, "What is going on here right now?" Ah, and then of course his his song about um, Barack Obama. Yeah, the crowd was loving that one. Yeah, they were. I mean, you know, there's a few blurred faces here and there. I mean, rightfully so, of course. You know, if they don't want to, um, you know, don't want to show their faces on uh, <laughs> everyone's TV screen in America. But uh, I believe there was something that we actually found on Twitter um, earlier. It was like one of the most viewed um, over Mulan. And I'm like, well, yeah, I don't really think everyone was. Like, this is a movie that we didn't know that we needed, of course. This kind of came out of left field for a lot of us. Yeah, no like, one really Mulan, knew it was coming. Yeah, like, no one knew it was coming. I'm not, you know, trying to sit here and, like, defend Mulan or anything. But, I mean, to be fair, it's like, I mean, we've known about Mulan for a while. So, um, but, you know, everyone gets tired, tired of remakes, remakes. So, let's uh, let's just get a good sequel in there. And we, we definitely got one with, uh, with Borat, too. <laughs> Subsequent movie film. <laughs> Subsequent. <laughs> I just, I, the really, well, probably like one of the last things I'll say. I, I really just love how he figures out that he is the one who just spreads COVID everywhere. He's the He's one. Like, yeah, they kept bouncing me around and I didn't even put two and two together. And if you fit, if you figured it out early, kudos to you. It reminds me of that scene from Contagion where it shows how it all started and, and how. Yeah. It- transmitted <laughs> the fact that like that was like one of the most streamed like most viewed movies uh right as covid was you know starting and i'm like do people just like like being scared or like do they just want to watch something that's like you know hap that's going on like currently happening in today's world or might as well be prepared i guess so but uh yeah it yeah it, it was it was really cool they kind of showed how all that started I was confused, like, what they gave him. Like, oh, maybe it was just some type of, um, you know, like, vaccine for, like, <laughs> like well, it wasn't a vaccine. <laughs> That's for sure. I bet Borat but, yeah. has the vaccine. <laughs> he accidentally creates it. <laughs> Part three, <laughs> towards the end of COVID. That would be so funny. But, yeah, man, so uh, w- would you recommend this uh, film to just, like, anyone? I guess yes. you know we'll wrap up here in a bit, yeah. Unless pretty much, you, unless you have <laughs> uh, terrible those beliefs where you would I be mean, offended even, by this. Yeah, which a lot, feel like a lot of people are. Yeah, and I mean it's 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 um 
Oh my gosh. It's uh God. Jojo Rabbit all over again, you know. People people didn't like it. And it's like, well, that's I mean, it's it's kind of just how it is. It's like this is literally how, you know, pointless like all of this was. And yeah, it, it's just it's just a really big eye opener, but like I'm I'm always down for a good satire movie. So uh you ready to get into scores here? Yeah. All right, so Devin, out of 100 Borats, the subsequent movie films, what would you give this score? Very nice. <laughs> um, I, I'll give it an uh, 85. Ooh, 85. Okay. I was actually going to give it a, just a straight 90. Um, there you go. I mean, I can't really give it a perfect, perfect score. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, the main issue for me was was the scenes where he live, he's wibbling with the two guys. It just didn't feel believable. It didn't feel believable, but it was still pretty funny. It was funny. His, his workout routine. <laughs> he got his best buds. <laughs> and it's like, it, yeah, they were like, like there's a difference between like, being like naive and like ignorant and like oblivious, but they were like completely just like shut out backwards like oblivious to what was going on so <laughs> yeah but yeah that uh pretty much wraps up our review here of borat subsequent subsequent movie film of course Devin, thank you for coming on uh with us as well and all and of course you know election day is coming up so you might as well vote if you haven't voted already um i voted myself i'm not sure if Devin has yet or not but I'm sure he'll get to the poll soon. I did but, send out yeah. my ballot last week. Ooh, nice. And yeah, exactly. See, you don't even have to go to like your nearest um, facility of, you know, to go stand in line if you don't want to. Just, just send in that nice absentee ballot and just, just have your voice heard. You know, don't, no matter who you are voting for, it's, it's, it's just important to vote. And I think that's the more important thing here to have more Americans participate in you know who's going to be leading our leading our country and you know not even just the president but you know uh the powers that be that fall uh, below the president as well you know it it takes it takes a village you know unless to, to unless you're country. unless you're voting for trump you might just want to stay home yeah or you know just don't vote no it's exactly. <laughs> it is your america it is your right as an american to vote but just make sure to you know be informed if you are going to be going on these reddit forums or arguing with your best friends on facebook make sure you know what you're talking about before just like spouting out things that you know that's going to get a reaction out of somebody as in just have a civil conversation agree to disagree it's possible people can have a disagreement and still be friends and i know sometimes it's a lot it is a lot sometimes, you know, you're going on Facebook, social media, Twitter, all that jazz, and you kind of just want to, like, mute the world. And an easy way to do that is not to go on social media. I mean, we're on it every single day, but definitely check out The Social Dilemma if you haven't already. Um, if, you know, if you're too, uh, I guess, obsessed with, like, one social media platform or the other, um, they do listen to you, by the way. Like it's it's technology that they, there's a lot of money in in ads and revenue um, when it comes to that kind of jazz and um, promotions, advertising. There's a lot of money in advertising. But I'm going to stop rambling. Of course, um, <clears throat> we do have some more uh, films coming up, or just things we're going to be reviewing. Of course, Devin, we are very close um, about two weeks away yeah two weeks away from today from the xbox series s and xbox series x launch um, fortunately i was not able to get one but i would love to find one of my friends who's playing on getting it you know kind of do some type of discussion where you know their first impressions of it but of course i will be getting the playstation 5 on november 12th so that'd be very um interesting i definitely would love to do a podcast about that or probably just write a little article up on the music city drive-in um website and of course uh, make sure to check out the other music uh city drive-in podcast network uh podcasts out there 
um, on the Music City Driving website. That is musiccitydriving.com. Um, you know, we got sports, there's Oscar talk, commentaries, music, all that jazz are, is up there. And of course, we are up there as well. And I believe within ooh, three weeks, uh, we have Animaniacs, we'll, we will be reviewing. Uh, we have Run as well. Uh, both uh, platform will be streaming on Hulu. Um, is there anything coming out, Sal? Of course, we have our new show every single week. Uh, minus last week, we uh, had to take a bit of a break there. Of course, you know, priorities. But we will be back this Thursday. Um, or Friday, I should say. Popping out on Friday. And, um, yeah, I don't know what we're reviewing this coming up week. Maybe On the Rocks, if you want to. If, have, have you seen that, Devin? No? Perhaps. Oh, I mean, what was it? All right, all right. So maybe, maybe we can do that. I mean, I, I'd definitely be open to it. I'm not sure what else is necessarily out there i know there's a few others but we'll uh keep everyone updated on that on uh twitter as well and of course you know you can listen to this podcast on every major podcast platform around the world uh, you name it we're there minus sirius xm we're literally pretty much anywhere you can think of and we hope you all have a safe halloween of course that's coming up this saturday Devin, are you doing anything or just gentle at home gonna watch time to break out the borat costume Oh, very nice. I excite. So, yeah, I'm going to stop rambling now. Uh, that was Devin. My name is Christian, and we will see you all in the next one. Peace.